The next part of the lecture will be about the Navier-Stokes equation. So if I want to describe a fluidic system um, in engineering, I'll need to be able to uh, describe, to calculate actually, what is, is going to be the, f the velocity field, given a certain system, fluidic system with a certain pressure or certain physical influences, what, how is the velocity field going to look like in my system? And that is, that is described actually by the Navier-Stokes equation. And I'm going to give a, I'm going to show the, the Navier-Stokes equation and I'm going to give an intuitive derivation. It's not an exact mathematical derivation of the formula, but I'm going to try to give you a feeling where this equation comes from. I want to give a comment back actually on uh, what I showed earlier, which was the Reynolds number, and I kind of derived where that Reynolds number comes from as uh, inertial, uh, inertial forces over laminar losses. Again, also the Reynolds number, that was not an absolute correct way of deriving this formula. It's just giving you a feeling how this, where this, you know, this dimensions number kind of comes from. I, giving the exact uh, derivation of that would take us too long in this introductory course. Same with the Navier-Stokes equation. Anyways, to get a feeling of where the Navier-Stokes, what it is and where it comes from, we start from Newton. And Newton says, force equals mass times acceleration. And Navier-Stokes equation is not going to talk about force, but they're going to say force per volume equals a mass per volume times an acceleration. And what is force per volume? Well, I can write force per volume is the same as force per area times distance. And this is going to be a pressure term equals pressure per distance, and a pressure per, dif per, per distance, I can see this is a pressure change per distance, I'm going to write this as a gradient. Ah, so I go from force over volume to a pressure gradient, we'll see this is the same, um, the same um, um, <clears throat> dimensions. Uh, what other forces? So I have a, a pure, maybe a pure pneumatic force. I will have other forces in my liquid. I will have viscous forces. I'm not going to derive where they come from. So this is the, the pressure gradient force. I have viscous forces. And the pressure gradient is going to be, has to be negative actually in my formula here. I will have viscous forces. So they relate to the viscosity times second derivative. <coughs> of the velocity. That's my viscous, so this is a pressure gradient. These are viscous losses. I have other forces. For example, I have gravity. And gravity here, so I can write here, gravity here is m times g divided by v, so I'm going to do the same here. What is m over v here? I can write here, it's actually it's the mass per volume is the density times g, and this is of course the acceleration. And I can write the same here. This is also a density term times an acceleration. So this density term here I can write as rho times g, but now I'm going to be more general. Instead of just writing the acceleration of of a gravity field, I'm going to write B, and B can be G, so this is a general, if you're in a general force field, acceleration of a general force field. So this can be, for example, the gravitational field, could also be that I have a liquid that has electrical properties, and therefore I put my electrical liquid in a magnetic field, and then my whole liquid will feel the magnetic force. I will also going to need some kind of acceleration term there. So, so B is a general term for an accelerated field. Most often it's only going to be gravity. Uh, I'm going to leave some place open here and I'm going to write equals rho times A. And what is A? That's acceleration actually. It's the change of velocity per time. Ah, so that's A. And I'm going to add two more terms. I'm not going to explain where they come from but just for 
uh, for having um, the full, so you see the full equation. There is another term here that I have to think of, and it is the compressibility. And that I'm going to write as, without deriving it, 1 over 3 times mu times gradient of the gradient of the velocity. And there's another term here that has to do with the rotation of the liquid that's in turbulent for turbulent flow, and it's u times so that has to do with the rotation of the fluid. So now I have a so this is a body force we had. This is a compressibility term. Compressibility. And this is an acceleration, and this has to do with the rotation of the liquid. <clears throat> so now I have rewritten somehow force equals m times a into fluidic terms. Eh? So these are similar formulas, or they have a similar kind of origin. <clears throat> 